From the flight deck to your TV set. From the flight deck to your TV set, you're watching Five Minutes with Herb. I'm your host, Herb Jackson, and as always, my goal here today is to make this the best five minutes of your day. So I ask that you sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Welcome aboard. Today's guest is a self-proclaimed blue-collar working actor. Uh, born and raised in New York City, my guy has carved out quite a career for himself. Basically over 100 you know, acting credits. Uh, some of the more memorable or some of my favorite shows I've seen him in are Law & Order SVU, uh, The Plot Against America, Billions, The Deuce, Bosch, Damages. Also, you know, he killed it as Maurice Levy in my favorite show, The Wire. He's also worked in theater, being one of the original traveling members of the Mel Brooks production, The Producers. And through that and other experiences, he wrote the book, Letters from Backstage. So without further ado, let's welcome aboard my man, Michael Kostra. Being born and raised in New York City is such an advantage. And I see that so many actors that I've watched on TV and movies were born there. Can you give us a little uh, background about New York and how that works? Well, absolutely. I mean, obviously it's a, it's a, it's a cultural center. So there, there's exposure to a lot of the arts, but it's more than that. It's the melting pot of New York. It's the people watching. We study human behavior as actors and New York is like the best, the best lab for that, you know? And you get to have lots of different experiences and encounter lots of different cultures. I feel so lucky to have been born and raised in New York. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, I think that's what it is. So growing up there, you um, started taking acting lessons while in school. How, how did that start off? You know, I, ha I have the worst origin story of any person I know because it was sort of like this, you know. I always knew I wanted to be an actor. I, uh, I, I it took me a long time to get started because of like, you know, lots of <laughs> low self-esteem, you know, just not, not making it, waiting tables, doing all that stuff. And I didn't start working, I didn't start working a lot until I was in my mid to late 30s, maybe 40s. Uh, so, but I, but I mean, yes, all my life, whenever there was a school play, I was in the school play. Whenever the, there was a play to go see, I, was, I went to see the play. Because it was, as soon as I knew there was such a thing, that was my, that was my, that was my calling, you know. That's good. That's but good. I, so I, waiting tables also? Yeah. Um, the, oh, yeah. Is that kind of like the actor cliche? <laughs> oh, it's the best. First of all, when I got my first waiting job, I was like, okay, now, now I'm an actor because that's the actor job. Yeah. But talk about people study. I would, I would subtly impersonate or, or try to speak the language of the people that I was waiting on because you get better tips, you know? So, oh, yeah. so, you know, the guys in from Brooklyn, all of a sudden, I'm like, what do you want? A cappuccino, espresso? You know, like I sort of would try to give them back. They're like, I like this guy. I don't know what it is. I like him, you know? That I would sort of try to try to like morph with my customers. That is awesome. Uh, yeah, true. You also yeah. mentioned theater uh, growing up. I understand that's near and dear to your heart. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Always loved the theater, particularly musical theater. And I thought my career was going to be as like the funny song and dance guy, you know, who comes on for a funny scene or two. Uh, you know, uh, when my career ended up being a lot more TV drama, uh, my friends are like, who are you? What? What? What's that? You know, just, you know, it's just a testament to this, the wonderful surprises of life. You don't know where it's going to go. Through those uh, touring opportunities, you wrote the book, um, Letters from Backstage. Can you yeah, share a little bit about that? Yeah, here's what happened. When I got the producer's tour, I was like, this is the job of a lifetime. I'm going to travel the country playing all these, you know, playing all these great theaters. And I wanted to take my friends with me. So, and I've been a, a, a writer professionally for many years. So, so every time we'd stop in a city, uh, just as we were about to leave, I'd write a short story about what went wrong in the show, what the locals were like, like weird, funny quirks of, about touring that people don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd send them to my friends as an email. And uh, people started saying, well, you should publish this. I'm like, nobody wants to read this. What are you talking about? I, just to shut my friends up, I said, all right, I'm going to submit a book proposal. And this publisher called and said, we want to publish your book. So the book takes you on, for, on tour with me. And uh, I love it because people go, I feel like I'm there. And that's, that's all I wanted to do was give people sort of that. Because touring is a whole, it's, it's a wonderful adventure. I, I miss it. And it's, uh, I'm glad I wrote that book because it's sort of given everybody the virtual experience. Yeah, I like the book. I, I, and in fact, um, reading the book while you were, you know, working with producers, you also were filming 
uh, the wire. That was a trip. Yeah. So tell going, us a little bit. You had to go, and that, that was. I was like, wow. So you literally were up till four thirty in the morning or whatever filming an episode of the wire, and then had to you know train back up to New York. There was one day that I had to, uh, you know, we're, we're we're singing and dancing in the in the heat of the summer, uh, learning this show. Long rehearsal days. Our bodies are sore. People are getting sick. And I had to take a train to Baltimore after, after rehearsal, got there about 9 p.m. just to pick up the phone and go, this is he. All right, Michael's wrapped off to the hotel. That, I had to take a three-hour train ride to do that. <laughs> uh, but as I said in the book, you can't complain. Oh, yeah. The producers and the wire. I think one of the funniest things, though, was making the adjustment. Because during the day, I'm doing wacky, crazy comedy and yelling and screaming and changing characters and changing outfits. And then The Wire, which is what I call think and mumble. You know, you just have to think and mumble. You know, it's, it's like I had to keep making that adjustment in style back and forth. It's fun. So I got to thank you for joining me today. But before we let you go, I got to get you in the lightning round. Okay. You and I are touring together. Our next stop is 500 miles away. What are we going to do? Are we going to fly or are we going to rent a car and drive? I think we're going to rent a car and drive. I like seeing the scenery go by and getting from here to there. And uh, you get tired of all those, all those planes. I hear you. So I'm going to give you a little LA no speed. I, I shouldn't say that because you're a pilot. Oh, Sorry. Hey, no, no, no offense taken whatsoever. <laughs> hey, I'm going to give you some LA speak right now. Oh, good. I'll meet you at seven. <laughs> what time can you expect me to arrive? There's no telling. You may, uh, you might get there by seven forty-five, or you might find something else to do and forget to tell me. Um, and then next time I run into you, you'll say, "Hey, we got to get together." <laughs> That's LA speak. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to give you two. There's only two places you can reside the remainder of your life. Oh, geez. Is it going to be in Beacon Hill or in Knob Hill? I think it's Knob Hill. That's San Francisco, right? Yes. Knob Hill. That was really cool. Yeah, yeah, it seemed like you really enjoyed the, that, that area with the- Well, Boston and San Francisco were the, the big reveals for me because I hadn't been the, the great towns, both of them. But I think I'm, I think I'm gonna go Knob Hill. Knob Hill it is. So, hey man, I just got jammed up. Uh, I gotta go to court. I need an attorney. Who am I gonna hire? Evan Braun or Maurice Levy? I think you're gonna hire Evan Braun because Unless you're on drug charges, Maury's not your guy. Maury just pretty much handles drug dealers. Okay. <laughs> Evan Brown handles any horrible criminal, like the guys who put their mom in a freezer and kept her in the attic. Yep. That's the kind of people I depend <laughs> Thank goodness for people like him, right? Uh... Great questions. <laughs> okay, <laughs> last one. I hate to end on a negative, okay. but what is more annoying you're in the middle of a show and someone's phone rings and they start talking on it, or you walk into a hotel room and it's lit with fluorescent lights. Oh, it's the person talking on the phone during the theater or talking or anything. Shut up, turn off your phones and watch the show. <laughs> I hear you, my man. That is, it's you just... did your research, man. You really did. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I try. I try. It was a great pleasure. I'm so glad. Thank you for joining me today, folks. That's another edition of Five Minutes with Herb. Thanks for watching. On behalf of my guest, Michael Kostroff, AKA Maurice Levy, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.